it's not as crisp running those routes. And because of that, James Jones told me all week long, Rodgers and his receivers would go to the field early and leave late, trying to get that timing down. And Jones did tell me, while we haven't lost our confidence, we are just pressing way too much. Joe? All right, so this battle on a chilly day in Minneapolis, 30 degrees, feels like 22. Wind out of the southeast at eight miles per hour. It's been a lot windier here in the stadium, which is where the Gophers play from the University of Minnesota. The Packers won the coin toss, they deferred. So we will see Minnesota start with a football. Glad you're with us on America's Game of the Week and it's Patterson from out of the end zone. Crosses the 25 where he runs into Micah Hyde, a 29 yard return and we will get our first look today at number five second year quarterback Teddy Bridgewater and a guy who Troy really has impressed this organization with his leadership he's not screaming for better stats he's just winning ball games here in a second season second year in this offensive system and last year of course they thought they were going to have Adrian Peterson for a young quarterback to depend on and I thought he came on strong at the end of last year and that has continued through this season. Only averaging 201 pass yards a game. But they're seven and two. Fake it to Peterson, pass is caught, flag is down, Stephon Diggs on the catch and it's a hold against the Vikings. Holding, number 75, offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. That's Matt Khalil, the left tackle, Troy. He didn't practice during the week. Been slowed down with a toe injury. Uh, he's the left tackle. There's really no excuse for this. He just simply tackles Julius Peppers, and the ball's coming out quick, as you see from Teddy Bridgewater. You're just trying to get the guy's hands down. You go low, but there's no need to grab. The ball's going to be out. Just a poor play there by Matt Khalil. Fourth overall pick back in 2012. Here's Peterson, has to hesitate, well played up front by Green Bay. Mike Daniels was in there, Burnett, there were others, a loss of one. Second and 21 coming up, and we'll look at some of the faces, maybe that second guy. Stephon Diggs, who wasn't a part of this offense at all the first three weeks, and now he's their main guy. Yeah, he got his opportunity because Charles Johnson missed some time with a rib injury, and he has made the most of it. He's been a dynamic player been a big time player since he got off the field there in week four. Burnett coming up from the secondary. Here's Peterson right side and with Matthews on his back. Adrian Peterson picks up 10 third down and 11 coming up and now defensively the inside backers for this Green Bay defense and they've struggled. First time Adrian Peterson Troy will see number 52 in the middle since they made that switch last year. They'll have their hands full. Yes, they will, as every defense does when you face this Minnesota team. And Adrian Peterson, he's having a great year. Last week coming off 200 yards rushing. At 30 years old, still as strong and as powerful and quick as ever. Asiata in the backfield on third and 11. Pass caught. Tripped up, but enough for a first down for Jarius Wright. Demarius Randall on the stop. A gain of 12 and a nice conversion for the Vikings on third and 11. Well, soft coverage by the Green Bay Packers. And he works off the line of scrimmage and just sits down right there in the middle. And he's able to catch the ball and then get up the field and pick up the first down. It's a big first down conversion. Third down conversion for this Vikings offense. Overcome that hold by Khalil from the 38. Pass digs on the quick slant. Good for eight, Demarius Randall on the stop. Well, we were talking about Stephon Diggs just a moment ago, and watching him, Joe, he's as good as I have seen in not only getting off the line of scrimmage as he does right there, but also getting out of his breaks. You don't see guys with that kind of quickness do some of the things that he does, but an excellent job getting off the line versus the press and giving his quarterback a spot to go with the ball. Second and two, Peterson carries. He's got it. 
As he takes it to the Green Bay 49, Randall on the tackle, a gain of four. Adrian Peterson, number one in the league with 961 rush yards coming in. Coming off a 203-yard day at Oakland. Well, he's so quick, Joe, and powerful that even when you clog things up inside, he has the quickness in order to stretch it and then still hit it and take some defenders with him. He's hard to corral, and you've got to get him in the backfield before he gets going. Here's a handoff to Wallace. And Mike Wallace is good for six. Randall again on the stop. He's been busy. Second and four. When you talk about Stephon Diggs, who we will highlight during the course of the day, his offensive coordinator, Norv Turner, compares him to the great Henry Ellard with how he comes out of breaks and has the presence, he thinks, maybe of a Michael Irvin. That's high praise. He's got a long way to go, but that's what they think of him. Well, I know what Norv Turner thinks of Henry Ellard, so when he compares anybody to him, that's high praise. Two tight ends in there. Pass is dropped by Wallace. Randall again involved and there is Mike Zimmer. Second year head coach 14 and 11 overall. And we'll talk about him as we go through this game but he is not one to shy away from just letting you know exactly how he feels. He's no nonsense. I think this team has really taken on that personality and as I said coming in all these players and Mike Zimmer included they say hey, this is this is our test against this Packers team that has dominated this division third down and four pass is caught McKinnon and he is upended what a good play out on the edge by Shields and with that tackle he forces fourth down good play that's an outstanding job by Shields coming up knowing one on one he's got to be able to make a play to keep McKinnon from picking up the first down and he makes the open field tackle. Excellent work. So if you're wondering if Mike Zimmer would go for it at the 41, the answer is no. Lock punts it end over end. Hyde will let it go over his head and into the end zone. And a net of 21 yards with that exchange. Here comes Aaron Rodgers. What's it going to be today? For the pack on offense. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency. Low fares, nothing to hide. As they took the field, Aaron Rodgers and his center, Corey Lindsley, came together. They've had a lot of meetings all week trying to get their mojo back. Here's Starks right side. Good start. Sandejo on the tackle, a gain of nine. For James Starks, who is taken over as the lead back now for Green Bay, and they hurry it up. Starks again. That's far. No gain. Third and one coming up. Good play by the second-year linebacker, Anthony Barr. And the numbers for Aaron Rodgers on the road against winning teams 8 and 19 but good numbers that's not all on him <laughs> quick throw pass caught and a first down for Jones he didn't get it by much but this good High-flying defense for the Vikings right there, but not able to stop James Jones. Yeah, he didn't get it by much, but he got it. And you're right, this Minnesota defense, they could fly to the ball. A lot of speed on that side. Packers have to establish the run. Rodgers keeps it, rolls out, and knocked out of bounds is Jones. Good play by Terrence Newman, the defensive player of the week for his two-pick day at Oakland last week in a win. And why not highlight the two guys on the left? This is a team that you know can do it through the air. They've proven that. They've got to run the ball. Yeah, I think they're going to be really committed to running the football here this afternoon. Aaron Rodgers, 61 pass attempts 
a week ago in that loss to Detroit. And that's not what Mike McCarthy wants to see again this afternoon. Here's Starks, a little hesitation, and turned that into a nice run. On second down, he picks up five. Sharif Floyd on the stop. This is the number nine defense, the number two scoring defense. And as Mike McCarthy says, they have impact players at all three levels on this defense. And the one guy we focused on there, Linville Joseph, he is having an outstanding season. Third down and five. Rodgers protected. Pass caught. Open in the middle of the field, James Jones, who did not have a catch all last week. He had the third down conversion. This one good for 25 and a big chunk of yardage for the Packers on offense. Well, the Vikings played coverage. James Jones is able to work the middle of the field. Aaron Rodgers with time in the pocket delivers a strike. Rodgers keeps it good fake and then he missed James Jones. And Jones was wide open. Yeah, and we've seen that now for a couple weeks with Aaron Rodgers. Here's that one play, the previous one that they catch over the middle of the, the ball. Here's the last one. That's still the previous play, but the last throw, Joe, he had time. He's got a wide open man. And we've seen that now a few times, and it's just not something we're accustomed to with Aaron Rodgers. Second and ten. Where are you going? Quick throw. Adams. Knocked down at the 30. He's going to be a yard shy of a first down. Xavier Rhodes out there at corner made the stop. Well, we had a chance to visit with Aaron Rodgers. He talked about, you know, some of the frustration in the passing game. He said, we're going to give some unscouted looks here this afternoon, meaning they're going to run some double moves, some different things that they hadn't shown on film. One of those was the one that he missed just two plays ago. Here's Starks. He is stood up. Tom Johnson was in there. Jo Joseph as well. Anthony Barr from the linebacker spot. Now fourth and one, and the offense stays out there. Well, Corey Lindsley, the center, he gets pushed back, and he gets pushed back enough to where they just couldn't get going the way you need to on third and short. I'm not surprised that Mike McCarthy is going for it here on fourth and one. So they got the first down and can't convert with more. It's against Minnesota, and that'll be a first down by penalty. You know, something we've seen a lot of. Offside, number 55, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Early in the season, we saw a lot of times when Rodgers was able to draw people off sides and get the free shot down the field. Hasn't had as many opportunities here the last couple weeks, unable to use the hard count to his advantage. This time he gets it and uh, picks up the first down. He's the best in the league at it. A couple times this season he's not been able to draw the opponent across early. That was a case against Detroit. Here's Lacey, and he's brought down immediately by Harrison Smith. The disappearance of Eddie Lacey is huge for the Green Bay Packers. He was inactive with a groin injury last week. The numbers when he's been healthy and available have not been good. This guy's got 20 rushing touchdowns the last two years. They don't have Jordy Nelson. They need Eddie Lacy. Well, if they're going to be the team that they want to be and accomplish everything they hope to when this season began, Eddie Lacy has to be a big part of that. Rodgers ends up getting dumped again. This time Johnson knocked him down, third and ten. Well, Mike Zimmer, he's bringing the pressure, and he talked about wanting to bring five-man rushes in order to keep Rodgers in the pocket. That time he rushes Anthony Barr, and he flushes Rodgers to his left, and then pressure in the middle. Now 
Third down and ten. The play clock at one. Aaron Rodgers talked about a lot of the one on one meetings he had with receivers. They were going over where they've been misfiring during the course of the last three games. And if you talk to Mike McCarthy, he thinks Aaron Rodgers and this offense actually has to slow yeah. down. They're trying to do too much and go way too fast. Well, they've always tried to play up tempo, but what he meant by that was that he, you know, Aaron Rodgers is playing too fast in the pocket, very quick in his drops, and the receivers are rushing their routes. So the timing between the quarterback and his drops and then what the receivers are doing on the other end has just been off. And so that has been a point of emphasis throughout that throughout this week. We'll see if it helps them as we move through this game. But this drive right now looks a lot like last week's opening drive against the Detroit Lions. They settle for a field goal, they get three points. And then they go on a run where they have nine consecutive punts. So a good start, third and long here to keep this drive going. Twelve play of the drive. Rodgers comes underneath, pass is caught, but Barr is there to wrestle Richard Rodgers to the ground. It's fourth down, and that was well played by this Vikings defense. Well, it's an outstanding job. This, this Vikings defense is third in the NFL coming into this game on third down. So when you're able to force a team to third and long, they don't give that up very often. And when you're throwing to the underneath guys, whether it's backs or tight ends, with their linebackers, they can run with anyone. Crosby's last taste was that 52-yard try to win it against Detroit that came off his foot weird, and he just smokes this one. From 42 yards out, and the Packers strike first on the road here against the Vikings. 3-0 Green Bay. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light. Make the right call. Drink responsibly. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide. And their spokesman, Peyton Manning, was not even with the team in Chicago. This squirrel's been wreaking havoc all day. I mean, from the pregame warm-ups to, to now. They just can't seem to corral that squirrel. But Brock Osweiler got a win in his first start in the NFL. So congratulations to Brock on his 25th birthday. Got a victory at the Bears. and. You talk about a wide open conference, the NFC, and specifically the NFC East. Nobody is stepping forward. Kickoff is short. This is Zach Line. The fullback with a nice return. Jeff Janis from the fullback on the return to the, to the squirrel. Great pad level. Great extension. Three nothing. Green Bay on top, covering it all in Minneapolis. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation that excites. By Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. And by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Winter is coming. Chilly day in Minneapolis. Packers have lost three straight for the first time since 08. That was Aaron's first year as a starter. Vikings have won five in a row. And they are in first place atop the division alone for the first time since Brett Favre is the Vikings quarterback as Peterson carries it for four. Yeah, it's been a nice run for them. You know, coming into the season, I, I thought that this was a team that was certainly on the rise and could, could, could accomplish some some good things and then they opened up against San Francisco and just did not look very good in that loss on opening night. Since then their only other loss has been to Denver and now a five game win streak. Here's a toss to Peterson. Gonna bounce it. Adrian Peterson into Green Bay territory knocked out by Clinton Dix. Good for 11. 
And that's just what makes him almost impossible to stop. Well, you bottle him up, but then when you give him an ability to get to the outside like he does here, everything is done right, but you don't maintain leverage on the outside contain, and he has the speed in order to exploit it. You see it over and over. Even when you're going up against eight-man fronts and unblocked men, Adrian Peterson has the ability to make those people miss, and it's pretty incredible watching. Here's Peterson again. You know, it was no given that after missing all but one game on the commissioner's exempt list last year, that Peterson at the age of 30 was going to come back and be this tremendous back again. And now here he is. He's on a roll now that we last saw. There's Roger Goodell who's in town, and we'll tell you why later. Because they did a walkthrough, I can tell you now, of their stadium that they'll be playing in next year. U.S. Bank Stadium, but Peterson is just rolling. Here's Rudolph with a catch. Slowed down, but touchdown. Vikings on top. People want to talk about what kind of passer is Teddy Bridgewater. They don't have a lot of big plays in their passing game this year, but you will not see a better thrown ball than what he lays out there for Kyle Rudolph. Not bad coverage by Micah Hyde, but he puts it up his upfield shoulder, lays it beautifully over the top, and then Rudolph delivers and making the play. That's just an outstanding job by those two guys converting on a big play here for a touchdown. 47 yards, Micah Hyde, who came in with a bad hit, needs attention. That's a career long for Kyle Rudolph. And with this catch and run, the Vikings take their first lead. They're going to have to bring a cart out onto the field, which they've done to help Micah Hyde leave the playing field. Let's take another look as he's chasing down Kyle Rudolph. Rudolph stays upright, goes into the end zone. And it's possible to speculate exactly what it is. He came in with a bad hip. And now he leaves with the right leg straightened outside the cart. As the Vikings have taken their first lead of the game with 3.01 left in the opening quarter. Here on the campus of the University of Minnesota. Second year the Vikings have played here and they will open a new stadium. It looks unbelievable. We'll show it to you later. Next season. Side of the old Metrodome. This one is no good. As Blair Walsh misses his third extra point of the season. And it's a three point game now. Here in Minneapolis, Kyle Rudolph was a pro bowler in his second season, former second round pick out of Notre Dame. And after catching passes from guys like Freeman and Webb and Christian Ponder and Matt Castle, he's catching passes from Teddy Bridgewater, who continues to get better and better and better. And the Vikings, after a missed extra point lead by three, as Janice will return it. Hyde had been returning kicks and he breaks loose. Janice! A nice cutback and great starting field position for the Packers. Axum brought him down, but a 69 yard return by a guy who's been waiting for his turn on offense. He makes an impact play here. Well, he definitely has some speed and. You, know, you look at what happened on that possession by the Vikings going down and getting a touchdown in order to turn momentum around and get a return like this and set your offense up with outstanding field positions. An excellent job by that return team. J.C. Treader has taken over at center for Corey Lindsley. Injured last time the Packers had the ball. Special teams had trouble last week. For the Packers and their coordinator, Ron Sook. Big play here. Here's Lacey right side. And this determined back picks up nine.
Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. You mentioned center Corey Lindsley out. He is questionable to return right here. You see him get him rolled over his ankle. Like I said, questionable to return, Joe. This offensive line just banged up. Lindsley, the only one not on the injury report out of the starting five. And free safety, Micah Hyde, he's also questionable with a hit. Wow, that play was completely off. Jones was the closest one to it, and everybody's looking around. Well, Aaron Rodgers clearly upset with James Jones. It was off play action and just a miscommunication on what exactly Rodgers was expecting of him, but clearly not on the same page. So you got second and short. What should have been an easy conversion, you pick up the first. Now they're looking at third and one. He was trying to pull it back, came out of his hand. Now third and one, Harrison Smith just limped off the field to safety. Here's Lacey. He's bottled up in the backfield. And well played by Brian Robinson. Fourth down. Well, Brian Robinson plays this beautifully. Brian Belaga, the right tackle, he's the one who's assigned the blocking. And he plays off the block and is able to get Lacey in the backfield. And they force another field goal attempt. You look at that last three plays Joe they pick up a big nine yards and then nothing on second down with the incompletion and fail to pick up third and short 47 yard try to tie it which Crosby does but that incompletion on second and one was huge and the Vikings defense with two third and one stops already in this half tied at six Cordero Patterson was an all-pro kick returner in 2013, his rookie year. First-round pick out of Tennessee. He was more involved in the offense back then. He's had less of an impact offensively. But in that 2013 year, had two kick returns for touchdowns and had a 93-yarder at Oakland for a touchdown last week. 6-6 game. Take a knee. Roger Goodell got a tour of the new stadium. It will be home to these Minnesota Vikings next year. It's been a long fight to get it done. And when you look at the artist rendering of what it will eventually look like, it's impressive. Same group that designed AT&T Stadium home of the Cowboys, it's massive. It takes up the entire footprint of the old Metrodome, including the parking area. You can fit the Metrodome, if it was still there, either way inside the new facility, and it's gorgeous. Well, it's going to be beautiful. There's no question about that. And they, they desperately needed one. Stephon Diggs, good play, is made by Hayward. Gain of two. It's going to be a very intimate setting and figures to be really loud for any team that comes in here to visit the Minnesota Vikings starting next year. Yeah, they got the new stadium. They're also building a new practice facility. So, you know, the stadium that they were at at the Metrodome has obviously gotten old, and their practice facility has as well. So they're going to have as good of facilities for these players as anybody in the league. That'll be a false start. False start, number 75, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's the second penalty on Matt Khalil. Had a rough year last year, Troy, was bothered with a knee injury. He's battling through a toe issue right now, didn't practice during the week. They've had changes up front. They're good on the interior part of the offensive line, and they lost load hold out at right tackle as well. Yeah, they lost load hold back at training camp. They've been without John Sullivan, although Joe Berger has come in, and he's actually played well. But they've had to shuffle things around, and. You know, they've still been able to run the ball. It's a better run-blocking offensive line than it is pass protection. Second and 13, Bridgewater will take off and slide as Clay Matthews is there to lay on top. And with third and seven coming up, here's Kurt Menefee with a game break. All right, the Seahawks trying to get back to 500 have scored on each of their two possessions so far against San Francisco. Thomas Rawls, a little two-yard score. They missed the extra point, but have a 13-0 lead. Joe Troy and Aaron. Emma Colin Kaepernick now on IR for San Francisco as that seems to be headed for a 
messy divorce. Time will tell on that. It's the end of the quarter, tied at six. Minneapolis back after this. From your local Fox station. One quarter in the books in this battle of the top two teams in the NFC North, seven and two, taking on six and three, and it's the Vikings on top. Tie game, but on top in the division. Facing third down and eight with the ball just outside their own 22. Bridgewater's going to step through it, try and pick it up with his legs, and he dives for the first down. Went around Julius Peppers and picked it up as he was good for nine. Well, Teddy Bridgewater does an excellent job at the snap of identifying 48. Joe Thomas here is the guy the line needs to pick up, and they do a good job of that, but then pressure inside, and Teddy Bridgewater really not known for his running but he is good when he takes off. He's not an overly fast guy, but guys just don't catch him. He's a 4-7-40 guy, but when he's had opportunities, he's made the most of them and has picked up some key first downs. On first down, Bridgewater's in trouble here. Down he goes, and a flag on top of it. Dayton Jones is there for Green Bay, and this is a huge loss. Holding, number 75. Offense, the penalty's declined, second down. Instead of a hold, it's a loss of 18. What a play by Jones. Well, look at the left side right here. You've got B.J. Raji. He goes right through the left guard, Brandon Fusco, and then Khalil, he's struggling with protection himself. Dayton Jones is there. That's an outstanding job of just working through the blocks beating the man and then getting Bridgewater on the ground. And finally, the Packers defense has a sack. They went three games without one. After the previous 42 with at least one. And on second and 28, Peterson is stuffed. Well, you think back over the last few weeks, even last week against the Lions, they were able to generate some pressure on Matthew Stafford, but they didn't get to him. And you know, yeah, it affects your ability to throw the ball in the pocket as a quarterback when there's pressure, but when you sack him, it really is, it kills drives. I mean, it essentially means you're going to be punting. At third and 26, hard to overcome. We'll see what the Vikings are able to do here and whether North Turner plays it conservatively. Here is Asiata out of the backfield. Fourth down. I don't know that Khalil, let's just say this, I'm not going to say he's not going to hold up. But with the bad toe, he's had three penalties called against him already. And he's got Clay Matthews who is staring at him in the face. He's got his hands full with 52 here today. Well, I, I've got to believe it's going to be Khalil's job as long as he can remain on the field. They don't have a whole lot of options behind him, just some young players. But that's a pretty formidable group of that defensive front by the Packers. Here's Locke with the punt, and a fair catch called for by Randall Cobb. The Packers get it back in a tie game on America's Game of the Week. Today's game is sponsored by Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. Sign up now. By Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49, only at BK. And by T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. And that's the ball game. I'm going down. I'm going down, 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 down. So what's happened and what's it going to be today? Still not calling the plays is Mike McCarthy. Tom Clements is. McCarthy has shown no indication that that'll change anytime soon. Fake it to Lacey, Rodgers throws and has Adams. And Devontae Adams has a Green Bay first down. Well, that's strong hands by Devontae Adams hauling that one in on the comeback down on the sidelines. Excellent job of making the catch and an 
know, in visiting with Aaron Rodgers and the opportunities that you spoke of earlier last week for Devontae Adams to only have 10 completions and 21 targets, just not good enough. Here's Lacey. Spins out of one. That's Eddie Lacey. Down near the 30. And the third-year player out of Alabama blew right through Sendejo and picked up 27. Yeah, where has this been? This is the Eddie Lacy that we've seen the last two seasons and his ability to make people miss in the hole and then break tackles. Outstanding run. Over, 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 over. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Season long for Lacy of 27. As Eddie gets it again, this time he's stuffed. That, by the way, the fourth Green Bay carry for 20 or more yards this season. It was a big part of their offense. If you look at where they are, I mean, they don't have Jordy Nelson. That's starting to show up more and more. And defenses are figuring out how to slow down Randall Cobb. They haven't had Eddie Lacy a lot. Not at the fingertips of Aaron Rodgers trying to get Lacy back here today. Second and nine. Ready, go. Little flip to Lacey. A hesitation, a good run after the catch. It'll bring up a manageable third down as he gets six. Well, there's been a lot of speculation as far as Eddie Lacey and, and why he hasn't been more effective. Is he overweight? Has he not been healthy? I know Mike McCarthy would say, I just don't think he, he's healthy. And really hasn't been. He had the ankle injury earlier in the year. He claimed it wasn't that big of a factor. I think it might have been the groin injury, certainly impacted last week in his inability to go but they liked what they saw of him in practice this week and they felt that he'd be able to open it up and he has been able to third down and three Rodgers is able to get it out of his hand and throws short to Cobb and he had Randall Cobb there for a first down but couldn't get it to him fourth down A lot of coverage down the field. You see, they don't match up man-to-man -man across the board. And Aaron Rodgers with some time, trying to buy some time in the pocket, just unable to find anybody open before it collapses on him. Lang was holding him up as he was able to get the throw away. Three possessions, three field goals. This one good from 40. The Packers back on top by three here on the road in Minneapolis. There's the drive, six play drive. Covering 218, Crosby's three for three. Packers may have lost Devontae Adams. They're still checking him on the sideline after making a catch. Now he's up, as you see on the table, they're looking at that left leg, left ankle. We'll update that as we go. Meanwhile, the Packers are back on top by three, and Patterson has it sail out of the back of the end zone. And as we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, I'm Joe Buck along with Troy Aikman, the three-time Super Bowl champion Hall of Fame quarterback. What are you seeing out of uh, Aaron Rodgers in this offense for Green Bay so far? Well, I like the fact that they've been able to get the running game going. I mean, it's as good as we've seen of them in the last couple of weeks. And this is a good defensive team in Minnesota. They have given up. Teams have run the ball against them at times this year, but they don't give up a lot of points. So based on what we've seen the last few weeks of Green Bay, I think sometimes you say, well, they're not finishing drives, but they're stingy. The Vikings are defensively, so things are okay right now. Here is Adrian Peterson. Step past Clay Matthews. Morgan Burnett on the tackle, a gain of four. You know, this is a defense for Minnesota that is number two in the league in scoring defense, just giving up 17 points a game on average. So even though the, the Packers haven't been able to get a touchdown, coming away with the three field goals has been good here in this first half. By two. Peterson is knocking on the door here in week number 11 of a 1,000 yard season. Four yards away. Pass caught. That's Diggs. And Stephon Diggs is out near the 40 where Randall drags him down. Good for 16. Well, it's really pretty good coverage as he comes off the line, but as you're going to see, Diggs. And he gets Demarius Randall running, and he comes out of that break. That's what creates the separation. 
When you have that kind of quickness and the ability to stop that suddenly at the top and come back to your quarterback, it's hard to cover. And Diggs, as I said, he's one of the best that I've seen in a long time at doing it. Here's Peterson. They don't let him get going, and a flag flies as Matthews is in on the stop, along with Daniels. And Daniels is the one that gets up in the face of Adrian Peterson. We'll check the flag. Holding, number 63, offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still first down. This time it's Fusco. Longtime right guard playing on the left side for the first time in his career this year, and he's guilty of the hold. And I guess as he spun B.J. Raji around. Uh, we've seen him, we've seen Khalil, too many penalties that we've seen for this offensive line that just puts you in down in distances that are hard to overcome. First down and 20, that's the third holding penalty against the Vikings. Bridgewater able to stay upright for a moment and then he ducks a hit. As Nate Palmer was coming in, Teddy Bridgewater just got down and out of the way. J. Ron Elliott was the first guy there. But watch this disappearing act. Well, it's a good job by Bridgewater getting to the ground. Nate Palmer came in last week against the Lions. He had gotten benched the week before and, and really played well. In fact, the entire defense for the Packers played well last week against the Lions. Goes down as a sack. That's the second of the game for the Packer defense. Bridgewater, Peterson, Hayward in his way, and a good job by Casey Hayward. Gain of six, third down coming up, and Peterson's all fired up. I think both these teams realize what this game means. I mean, for the Vikings, top the division, what they would be able to accomplish, you know, if they were able to win this game, what, would, what that would mean within the standings. But a lot riding on this for the Packers, who need to right the ship after having lost three in a row. And they put themselves right back in the middle of this divisional race with a win today. Took his helmet off on the field. Typically, that'll draw a flag. Didn't get it. Now third down and 14. Bridgewater drops it off. That's the tight end. Ellison, well played by Green Bay. And they rally to the football, a gain of just two. It's fourth down, and it's the Packer defense that's playing well so far in this opening half. Yeah, really good job of, as you said, Joe, rallying to the football. You know, once they got the penalty then on Fusco, and you're looking at long down and distances, it was going to be difficult. They give the underneath completion, rally to the football, and force a punt. Jeff Locke. it up for Cobb and a fair catch hauled in just outside the 20 at the 22. 41 yard punt. Green Bay has the football again as they lead by three. Today's game is sponsored by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. Bud Grant Way. The great head coach that coached the Vikings to four Super Bowls in the 70s. Still keeps an office at their facility. Here's Starks right side. Harrison Smith came up to make the stop. No gain. We'll show you more about Bud Grant as we go through this game. Well, you go to that office, you talk about at the facility in Eaton Prairie, and I'm not sure you would even know that he ever had any involvement with sports. I mean, it, he's a big hunter, an avid hunter, and a lot, a, lot of his, a lot of his trophy kills are on the wall and displayed more so than some of the other sports trophies that he's gathered over the years. Second and ten. Ready, go. This pass is caught and a big time grab by Cobb. Over the middle, 
with a defender all over him, and the first catch for Cobb is good for 14. Yeah, Captain Munnerlin was in good coverage. He's right on his tail, and Aaron Rodgers lays this one right out in front. Cobb makes a nice play on the ball. Here starts. Met in the backfield and loses yardage. First guy there was Daniil Hunter. And Daniil, a third round pick out of LSU, is a big bodied defensive end who's just learning angles and how to play out on the edge in the NFL, but they think he's got a chance to be a good one. Yeah, he, like you said, he's just a young guy, a third round pick out of LSU, but he's got some real length to him. He's learning some of his pass moves, but that was a good job of fighting off a Bachler and making a play in the backfield. Second and 13, Rodgers rolls, finds James Jones, who drops it. Had the first down, and Jones can't hang on with Terrence Newman on him. It's third down. Yeah, everything was good except for the finish. And Rodgers puts it on him perfectly, and James Jones is there to make a play, and he just is unable to haul it in. That's kind of what's happened with this offense over the last several weeks. You know, everybody wants to know what it is. It's a lot of different things. Not making a play when it's there. Not protecting your quarterback and then a bad throw at the same time. Play clock winding down. Timeout taken by Rodgers. Third down and 13 when we come back for the Packers leading by three. This Vikings defense started the day number three in the NFL in third down defense. Number two in the NFL in scoring defense. It's a three point Green Bay lead. Third down and 13. Let's see what Mike Zimmer wants to do third and long but he's known for bringing a lot of pressure on third downs. Head coach Zimmer calls the defense. Running. Running. Rogers is set. Munnerlin. Johnson there as well, but Captain Munnerlin came in on a blitz and a loss of nine. Well, they show linebackers up tough here. They pull out, and then they bring Munnerlin off the corner, and they're trying to get underneath anything that Rodgers wants to try to throw too quick. It's a well-designed defense by Mike Zimmer. They execute it beautifully, and Munnerlin is able to get there unblocked to make the play. That is five straight third down stops for this Vikings defense. It hit. And it's going to be out of bounds just outside the 40. Jarek McKinnon came in and got a hand on it. Jer Jarek McKinnon comes right here and he's able to get a hand as he's blocking. It looked to me like Maste, if he felt it at all, maybe could have just slid a little bit to the left and he avoids it completely, but. McKinnon is there to make the play. So for this special teams, they've had a big kick return. Now they have a punt blocked. Talking about Green Bay after having a long kick return last week by Amir Abdullah of the Lions. Down by three, starting inside Green Bay territory, and this defense is rolling. Clay Matthews makes the stop. Thanksgiving weekend, we've got some of the best rivalries in college football, including the game of the week. On Saturday, when Notre Dame takes on Stanford, and a must-win game for both teams' playoff chances. It all starts Thursday on FS1. A loss of three on that carry by Peterson. Bridgewater keeps it. And down he goes! How about this defense? Dom Capers has got him playing for the second straight week and Bridgewater's hurt. Peppers and Daniels came in 
And got to Teddy Bridgewater and he's holding that left arm. Now Julius Peppers he just keeps working against Khalil and he comes back and then there's pressure on the inside as well and Mike Neal got the hand to the face of Bridgewater and then the full body weight of Neal comes down on Bridgewater and that left shoulder and Bridgewater has to come out. Sean Hill who played at the end of that game here a couple of weeks ago against St. Louis and who has been with Norv Turner in the past is now the backup and he takes over. Well, he's a guy who's been in the league a long time. He's played a lot of football as a, as a backup. He's gotten his opportunities as a starter and he knows this offense. Faced with third and 16 and he's in trouble. Throws and it's off the hands of Stefan Diggs. Fourth down. A pretty good play by Hill to start his day, but Diggs can't haul it in, and you just wonder how hurt Teddy Bridgewater is as he sits on the bench. Well, Dayton Jones, he gets past, look like Mike Harris there at right guard. He gets pressure on Hill. Even if Diggs is able to make this play, Sam Shields there is there to make the tackle, and they don't pick up the first down, but Defensive front by Green Bay has gotten after the Vikings offensive line and the Vikings don't capitalize on that punt block and the great field position. But Jarek McKinnon got it. Fair catch up near the 20 by Randall Cobb. Early game headlines and headliners. How about Cam Newton? Five touchdown passes to five different receivers are 10-0. Tony Romo is back. The seven-game losing streak is over for Dallas. And Jameis Winston has five touchdown passes today in a big win over Philadelphia. And Bridgewater's going to go in and get looked at. And now Zimmer's defense back to the field to take on Rodgers. Drive starts at the 20. 11, 11, 11. One timeout left for Green Bay. Here's Starks. And Starks has Joseph on his back, a gain of just three. And that could take us to the two minute warning. Going to be close. Green Bay wants to get one more play away. And they can't. Two minute warning. Here's the hit on Teddy Bridgewater. Trailing in the game are the Vikings. Inside getting looked at is their young quarterback, Bridgewater. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. Two minutes left in this low-scoring half. 9-6 Green Bay, second and eight for the Packers with the ball at their own 22. Aaron Rodgers completing passes at 54% here in this first half. Second and eight. Rodgers is sacked again. Pass protection breaking down as Griffin gets up celebrating. As he's got six and a half on the year. Well, they disguise the coverage pretty well on the back end, and then Griffin, who is working against left tackle Bakhtiari, is able to get around the edge and get to Rodgers. Timeout taken here by the Vikings. You see the speed that Griffin rushes off the edge and is able to collapse the pocket, and I think the coverage on the back end, initially they showed that they were going to be one-on-one -on -one outside. They pulled out of that and played coverage and made Rodgers hold it just a little bit longer and Griffin able to get there before the ball gets out. So we are seeing more of the same to some degree. We've seen some drops. We've seen Rodgers under pressure. He's getting hit again. He's been hit six times, sacked twice. He's missed a couple of open receivers. It's another week of it so far. Well, it is. Coming into this game against this defense of Minnesota, as you knew it was going to be a challenge. So that's why from Green Bay's perspective, it's so good that their defense is playing as well as they are. Third down and 15. Ready. 
Just four men on the rush. Rodgers out to his right, airs it out for Janice. And a flag. A huge penalty against Minnesota and Terrence Newman. He did not get his head back around enough to avoid the penalty. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Janis, he's got great speed. 23 defense while we placed in the spot of the foul. First down. He's got great speed down the field. Rodgers could have tucked that and run. He had a lot of room out in front of him. But as soon as he broke contain, he knew he had one-on-one, -on -one and he wanted to give Janis an opportunity, an underthrown ball. And then Newman gets caught and a big penalty. It's a lot of yards that's picked up as a result. Yeah, 50. Green Bay has not been penalized. Now 80 penalty yards against Minnesota. And on third and 15, a first down on a 50-yard penalty on Newman. Pass is caught by Rodgers. Made one tackler miss, brought down by Munderland, a gain of four. One timeout left for Green Bay. But now time really not a factor after that big penalty against Newman. Second and six. When you start trying to outflank this defense and throw it out wide, it, they, they pursue so fast. Hard to get much out of those. Vikings back out after showing blitz. Rodgers finds his man. He's got Jones, and James Jones has got a first down. They'll mark him at the 16, good for 14 yards to number 89. Under a minute to go. Here's Rodgers near side, brought down immediately by Harrison Smith. It's an excellent job by Harrison Smith making a tackle against a bigger guy and keeping him in bounds and keeping the clock running and forcing a timeout. Timeout Green Bay. That's their last. Here comes Kurt. What's coming up? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, Baltimore gets a bittersweet win. Romo's return reaps results, and Newton and Winston collect five TDs apiece. Our legendary lineup examines that plus much more on the visa at time. Hey, Kurt, why am I the only guy standing out here? Because you're one of a kind, Jimmy. <laughs> Here's the penalty against Terrence Newman as Janice. They're without Abraderis and Ty Montgomery. Montgomery, another miss of a game with a bad ankle. Abraderis had his ribs injured last week against Detroit. So their deep threat is Jeff Janis. He got behind Terrence Newman, and that was a big one against the vet. Hard to cover in that situation, no matter who you are. Underthrown ball when you're running down the field at those speeds. That was a result of Rodgers getting outside the pocket. First time either side's been in the red zone. Neither team's been effective moving it once they've started to get something going and Mike McCarthy as James Jones is overthrown is wondering if this is the drive that they break through or if they settle for another field goal try a lot rides on this third and nine they've been pretty good here over the last four weeks as you see Bridgewater coming back out on the field in the red zone they just haven't gotten down here all that often but the Vikings defensively have been very good all year long in this area of the field and keeping offenses out of the end zone. Third down and nine. Rodgers, this is going to be a hold against Green Bay and Bakhtiari. Pass is caught, but there's a flag down. And then the official threw his hat as Rodgers was hit. There could be two fouls on this play. The initial is on a hold right in front of the umpire. Fouls on both teams holding number 69 offense. Personal foul roughing the passer, number 98 defense. Those penalties will offset third down. So that's why Walt Coleman, who threw the flag for the hold against Bakhtiari, then threw his hat because he didn't have his flag left on the personal foul for what happened 
to Aaron Rodgers after he threw it. And that gets a flag in the NFL. Uh, you're supposed to have two steps. They feel like he could have laid off him. Not much of a hit. Well, that's a big call against Minnesota. Instead of the hold, they're offsetting, and it's third and nine again. They fake the handoff. Rodgers protected. End zone. Flag is down. Pass broken up. But a flag is thrown at the 10. And Jones, James Jones, came away pointing as if to say it's against Minnesota. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, number 55, defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Anthony Barr. It looked like he got Richard Rodgers as he was coming off the ball and past the five-yard area. The Vikings go with a four-man rush, and the offensive line does an excellent job of protecting Rodgers, giving him time. But they got Barr on the penalty, and now a first down with 19 seconds to go. That is now three third-down penalties on this drive against the Vikings. Nineteen seconds left. First and goal. This one batted down. And it's Everson Griffin who got up, and he was thinking about interception. Forget about knocking it down. Second and goal. And he almost got himself one. He goes up initially just trying to knock it down, and then has an opportunity to make a play. It hits him right in the chest. Second down and goal for Mike McCarthy's team. Eighth play of this drive. in coverage on Randall Cobb. I'm not sure that would be called. They may say it was over his head. It did, yeah, that's what they're going to They're going to pick up the flag. It did not look like he had an opportunity whatsoever. Rodgers really was just throwing that one away. There was contact at the back There's line. There's no foul for pass interference. The ball was uncatchable. Third down. And that's a good pickup on the flag. And instead of the fourth penalty on the drive, it's just an incomplete pass to bring up third down and goal, and Bridgewater looks fine. Well, and Rodgers, he's got to go to the end zone with this one. If they catch it inbounds and the clock's running, they're not going to have time to get the field goal team onto the field. They can't spike it either. This is third down. This has got to be to the end zone. It is! Touchdown, Randall Cobb! And Aaron Rodgers able to celebrate a touchdown throw here with six seconds left in the half. And for Rodgers, his 22nd of the year. I know Mike Zimmer's not happy about that. Randall Cobb was really the focus of this defense. They go trips to that side. And they stretch the defense, and he's able to come off the line of scrimmage and run the skinny post, and Rodgers puts it right on him. Captain Munnerlin was playing outside technique. They tie up the underneath guys with the inside route. Pretty easy touchdown. 80-yard touchdown drive. High snap. Good hold. Ten-point game. Three penalties on the Vikings defense helped to fuel that drive down the field. And Cobb has his sixth touchdown of the year. They go Richard Rodgers. He ties up the inside coverage. And with outside technique by Munnerlin, gives him a straight shot for the touchdown. Here's the big penalty against Terrence Newman as he was guarding Jeff Janis in the 50-yard foul. Put Green Bay in position. They protected Aaron Rodgers, and he found Cobb for the touchdown. Yeah, I don't really put that on Terrence Newman. That's hard when you're running down the field. You're expecting the ball to be thrown up the field. I credit that more on Aaron Rodgers being able to get outside the pocket and really put pressure on the defense. It was another big penalty. And it was against Linval Joseph. 
So instead of a hold against Bakhtiari, offsetting fouls to bring up third and nine, and that was then followed by illegal contact against Anthony Barr. And that little shove by Linval Joseph helped Aaron Rodgers and the Packers with their extra opportunities get it into the end zone. They lead by 10 with six seconds left. Cordero Patterson is deep. And it's a squib kick that will go right out of bounds. So that will bring the ball to the 40. Six seconds left. Maybe not enough time to realistically get anything done, but it, here's the one positive for the Vikings and their fans seeing number five come back out there after getting the hit by Mike Neal. Talked about the penalty on Anthony Barr, the outstanding young linebacker, for that contact on Richard Rodgers. And they've been frustrated. And we're so with those penalties on that possession by Green Bay. Oh. Roger. Ready. Bridgewater, quick throw, pass caught, out of bounds with two seconds left. Is Rudolph, who has a touchdown in this game. Yeah, they're just trying to get as much yardage as they could there on first down and See if they can get it into a position where Bridgewater can now take a shot down the field. You know, on a Hail Mary, but with two seconds left, this is going to be it. Oh. Barring a defensive foul. Bridgewater throws it away, and that's it. Ten-point game at the half here in Minneapolis. And the Green Bay Packers come in on the road, having lost their last three games. Rodgers finally gets to celebrate a touchdown to Cobb. They lead by ten. Here's today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Each side has a touchdown. Otherwise, the kicker, Mason Crosby, has been busy for Green Bay. Ten-point lead here at the half. Green Bay will get the ball to start the second half. Welcome inside the booth. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. Aaron will come up in just a little bit. So uh, what did we see in that first half? You excited if you're a Packer fan with how that first half ended? I think defensively for the Packers, they, they played exceptionally well. They've been able to contain Adrian Peterson. The thing that has hurt the Minnesota Vikings is we saw defensively on the last possession, too many penalties, of course. They kept the drive alive, and then the Packers able to come away with the touchdown. But even offensively, I mean, they have had a number of penalties that have gotten them into third and long and just unable to convert, so they've been unable to sustain the drives. Look at that fourth statistic. Talk about penalties specifically. Six times for 85 yards for the Vikings. Janice will take it on a hop. He has one long one this time. Nothing could develop. Blanton on the tackle, a return of 13 yards. Down to Aaron we go. And as you can imagine, Mike Zimmer addressing the penalties with his team at the half. He told them, you just need to settle down. He's had first and 23 times. He said, we shot ourselves in the foot that last drive there. And actually, Coach Zimmer very mad at himself with the coverage he put out on the field when Aaron Rodgers threw that touchdown pass to Randall Cobb. And he said, it's pretty darn clear what we have to do here in the second half. Stop the run. How do they open the second half? They will start with Lacey left side. And Eddie Lacey is brought down by Floyd. A gain of two. Uh, I know in visiting with Mike Zimmer this week that 
the two things that he wanted to do defensively was control the running game, and, and they've done that with the exception of the, the one run that Eddie Lacy got, 27-yard run, and then Randall Cobb. And so Randall Cobb had the one completion that was for the touchdown. Right. Overall, the defense, other than the penalties, has been pretty good. Delayed handoff, Lacy. Nice move. Eddie Lacy is going to be knocked down right at the marker. See if they give him enough, and they will for a first down. Kendrick's on the tackle. Well, Harrison Smith, he was up in the hole and had an opportunity to make a play on Eddie Lacy just beyond the line of scrimmage, and he's unable to make the tackle. And Eddie Lacy does a good job of breaking the tackle and then getting some good yardage. They had to rewrap that right ankle of Lacy. He checks out. Here's Starks, gets a nice block, and James Starks is out of bounds inside Minnesota territory. T.J. Lang threw that block to spring James Starks for 30. Well, Aaron Rodgers does an excellent job of selling it as though he's looking to throw to his left. It gives the timing of the screenplay time to develop, and James Starks has just been outstanding. Did you see the blocking that takes place? James Starks has been really good on, in the screen game now for the past three games. That was Lang taking out Eric Kendricks, the rookie middle linebacker, who had missed the previous two games with a rib injury. And Starks picks up one. I can tell you, Joe, being good at the screen game doesn't just happen. I mean, you have to spend some time on it because it really is about the timing and the relationship between the back and the offensive lineman as they get out. We've seen some big plays now for the last few weeks Running, for the Packers go. with it. Running, go. Second and nine, and Rodgers takes off. He will slide with a gain of about eight and a half. Just short of first down yardage, less than a yard to go, and Sharif Floyd. limps his way off the field before a third and one Floyd had missed three games came back against the Raiders had knee surgery Corey Lindsley is out with an ankle injury and it's the hip again for Micah Hyde injured on the catch and run on the 47 yard touchdown to Kyle Rudolph early in this game. Well, I thought it was an excellent job of Aaron Rodgers taking what he had. Now, when you slide, you give up something, and that's why now it's third and one. This Packers offense, they missed a couple of these third and ones in that first half. They're one for three on third and one so far. Lacey gets it, picks it up inside the 30. Joseph on the stop, but a gain of seven on third and one. And Richard Rodgers gets into it with Linval Joseph. Well, I would imagine there's a lot of talking going down, going on down there on the field between these two teams. And what's at stake in this ball game? It looked initially once Eddie Lacey got this one and got past the initial surge, he might. If he was able to break the tackle when Sandejo may go the distance, but he's able to get caught around the ankles. Yeah. Ready, go. Lacey again. And breaking tackles. Another good run by Eddie Lacey gets eight. Yeah, they come back with the exact same play that they just run there on third down, and Eddie Lacey showing some patience and a great job of breaking tackles. He's starting to look like the old Eddie Lacy. Last week against Detroit, 47 rush yards against the 30th ranked run defense. Better today against a better defense. Here is Lacy brought down right at the marker by Sharif Floyd. And they're going to give him a first down, it appears, with the spotting of the football, and they do. Well, there's Tom Clements, a play caller, and they talked about it this week. I know Mike McCarthy over the years has always said it's not so much about yardage when you're running the football. It's about rushing attempts. 
think he was really disappointed in himself that they didn't run the ball more last week against Detroit, but they've, they've remained consistent with it in this game. Ready, go. Push it. Ready, go. J.C. Treader in at center. Rodgers protected. End zone out of the reach of Cobb. It was covered by Munnerlin. Second down. Well, he had a chance. He had to step on Munnerlin. These are just some of the throws that they've just not been able to connect. Would have been a nice execution, but, you know, those are the things that we've always seen from this offense. Roger. Roger. Ready, go, go. Boxiari. False start, number 69. Offense, five yard penalty, still second down. We'll go back and take a look at that last throw that they had to Randall Cobb, a, a really good route. And he's got a step on him, and Aaron Rodgers knows that he that he missed an opportunity, and I mean they've they've raised the bar around Green Bay with the execution that they've had and their ability to make big plays down the field. And you, you kind of are shocked when you don't complete those type of throws, but those are some of the things that they've just missed here in the last month of the of the season. Twenty-one. Ready. Go. Officials get together before the snap. Was there movement out on the edge? Play clocks at one. Please reset the clock to 10 25. 10 25. They're going to add time to the clock. We'll see what they do with the play clock. 10, please. 10. We're going to put 10 seconds on the play clock. See, this is the first time the Packers have had a second half lead over the last four games coming in, having lost three straight. Ready, go. Tenth play of the drive. Incomplete for Cobb. Staggering coming off the line of scrimmage, never really got his head up. And it's third down and 15. I think that's some of the some of the timing that. We talked about a little bit earlier where they've just been a little bit off. Cobb, as you said, he came off staggering a little bit. Rodgers getting the ball out quick, and the timing of it just didn't match. Look at those numbers. Two out of seven. He does have the touchdown. But Rodgers and Cobb have missed five times. Ready. Ready. Pass is incomplete. Richard Rodgers not on the same page with Aaron Rodgers. And this stuff has continued for the Green Bay Packers despite the lead, which is 10. They'll try to make it 13. Well, I think this might be on Richard Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers sees Harrison Smith here in the middle of the field, and he's expecting Rodgers then to keep it straight up the seam rather than take it to the middle. And you can just see the frustration. We've seen that look all too often. Here's a 42-yard try by Crosby. And Mason Crosby is four for four. Packers have scored points on five of their six possessions and lead at 19-6 early second half. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Chrysler. Hurry in to the Chrysler Black Friday Blockbuster sales event. And by Papa John's, the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. It's the Minnesota Vikings Donut Club. It's been going on since 2008. Every Saturday at 8 in the morning, guys come in and lay claim to a donut, and there are many rules to be part of that donut club. Missing their good buddy, Jared Allen, who these days is playing for the 10 0. Carolina Panthers. First rule of Donut Club is you don't talk about Donut Club. Returned by Patterson. And now we'll see what Bridgewater has. You know, it's it's not to the point right now where it's abandoned the game plan or anything like that, but as Teddy Bridge, uh, Bridgewater comes to the field, there's a Donut Club, and these guys will try to figure it out as they trail by 13. 
talk to the guys around the Minnesota Vikings and they will talk about the toughness of Teddy Bridgewater. He's not a real thick guy but after getting that hit from Mike Neal they checked his left shoulder. He's OK to continue. And they hand it off to Peterson. Peterson first guy there was Matthews. Daniels cleans up. And we go down to Aaron Andrews more on Teddy. Yeah and you said it perfectly. Teddy Bridgewater is fine. I asked Mike Zimmer coming out of the half. How's he doing. He said he's fine. And I said well how do you know. And he said because there was no conversation. He just looked at me and he said I'm good to go. Let's go. <laughs> that was it. And that's what they've come to expect out of this guy who is the franchise quarterback. Out of talk this week. Is he or isn't he a game manager. As if that's a negative. McKinnon in the backfield Bridgewater throws he finds his tight end Rudolph who has a touchdown in this game every quarterback's got to be at some point a game manager Bridgewater has the ability when they need him to throw it down the field Yeah, and the reason they say that Joe is there's only one team that runs the ball more than the Minnesota Vikings they're built on running the fo football with Adrian Peterson as they should be so his numbers are never going to be that gaudy. They're always going to rely on their ability to hand the ball off to number 28. Third down and four here. Bridgewater able to spin his way and run for a first down. Only bad part of that play for Bridgewater was the slide after he went around Clay Matthews. Well Clay Matthews has a chance as he folds back into the picture but Bridgewater like you talked about Joe it seems like when there needs to be a play made that he's been able to do that this run will not show up as anything very significant on the stat sheet but it keeps this drive alive. Here's a toss to Peterson and there's Matthews. The five time Pro Bowl linebacker Clay Matthews makes the play a loss of three. Well Clay Matthews inside and this is what you've got to do if you're going to corral Adrian Peterson you've got to get to him before he gets going past the line of scrimmage and Matthews takes on the blocker he gets past him and then he makes the play on Peterson Zach line not able to make the block and Clay Matthews in the hole. So far Peterson a 2.6 carry average 11 carries 29 yards Peterson out wide to the bottom of your screen on second and 13 blitz Bridgewater in trouble and down he goes and ha ha Clinton Dix came on the blitz and he got home that's a good call by defensive coordinator Dom Capers I don't think Bridgewater ever saw it coming. He's going to come from the secondary and he comes deep and Bridgewater initially looking to his front side as he works back all of a sudden Clinton Dix is right in his face. And once again that's been the downfall of this Vikings offense just entirely too many third and longs and this one third and twenty three. That's a fourth Packers sack of the game first of the year for Clinton Dix. Third down and twenty three. Bridgewater gonna run but he's got a long way to go won't get there and then got a big hit at the end of it Casey Hayward on the stop he was joined by linebacker Joe Thomas a carry of 18 yards but it's fourth down well it was dangerous there we've seen Teddy Bridgewater a number of times tonight go down and protect himself but he knew that he had a long way to go to pick up the first down he's getting close there he tries to get what he can but he it's a pretty good hit for a guy who left the game earlier with a shoulder injury. Yeah, that was Morgan Burnett with the hit on Bridgewater and another punt from Locke. Cobb is brought down immediately by one of the best in the game, Marcus Sherrills. 44 yard punt, nothing on the return. Packers get it right back. Leading by 13. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon. Better matters. The quote from Bill Parcells on the now head coach of the Vikings, Mike Zimmer. He's a very dedicated football guy. He's not a celebrity. He's not looking for attention. He's just kind of a coach's son. 
What you see is what you get with Mike Zimmer, a tremendous defensive coach. Finally got his chance as head coach. Took over last year, went seven and nine, seven and two this year. First down, Green Bay from their own nine. Here's Lacey. Penalty flag flies. As Lacey picks up a few over the left side, but we'll check the flag. It is a hold. Holding, number 69, offense, half the distance to the goal. First down. He's been penalized more than anybody on the Packers this year, David Bakhtiari. Well, some questions as to whether or not he would even be able to go in this ball game. He left last week's game with a knee injury, and you know, for them, they were starting this drive so far backed up anyway that they don't get the full 10 yards and just a four-yard penalty. Third penalty of the day on Bakhtiari. Two holds, a false start. One of the holds part of an offsetting situation. First and 14. Pass is incomplete for Janice. And this is an opportunity here for this Minnesota Vikings defense to get a hold, get some field position as they try to get back on the scoreboard trailing by 13. Well, it's important for sure. You see Mike Zimmer, and he's trying to decide whether he wants to bring pressure or not. He realizes the defense has held up really overall pretty well, just giving up one touchdown, four field goals, but he can't even in a position right now give up any more points. He's got to get the ball back to this offense that has been struggling here in this game. Here's Lacey on the handoff. And that's a power run out to the 10. Wasn't much there at all. He picks up five and had to carry people with him to get that done. Third and nine coming up. Oh, that's some good tough running. It looks like he might be flipping a little bit as he goes over to the sidelines. I've been real impressed with what I've seen here today. Some tough runs by Eddie Lacy. I'm sure he's tired of talking and ask, answering to the critics as well this year. 11 carries, 65 yards Lacy. Aaron Rodgers at under 50% throwing it. Third and nine. Well, he's showing he's going to play coverage here. Rodgers out to his right. Pass is incomplete for Cobb. Had him, had the first down, and Cobb can't make the catch. And I'm really surprised. Mike Zimmer, you know, normally third and long, he's going to bring at least five guys. Instead, he just rushes four. Rodgers able to buy some time. And I mean, there was a time when these two would make this completion in their sleep. It's remarkable. A guy wide open like that and just not on the same page. The completion percentage has been extraordinarily low for somebody like Aaron Rodgers. He's under 50% in this game. 57 and 52% each of the last two. And flags fly before the snap. Full start, number 30, offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. They get John Kuhn, who's gone to the Pro Bowl as a special teamer. Under five to go, third quarter. That was a spot where Rodgers had Randall Cobb sitting there with first down yardage, and the two could not complete it. And Maste will start this near the back of the end zone. Here's Sherrills. They're going to throw a flag against the Vikings. And for what is good field position at the moment, they will march it backward. See Maste there. He tried to do a little acting at the end of that punt. See if he could get a call. He goes to the ground. But, you know, once again, the Vikings are going to get the ball at midfield. The and in the back during the return, number 34 of the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. They get Sendejo. Yeah, he's a good special teams player, too. Has been, but just a costly penalty that backs him up. Cobb and Rodgers talk it over. Missed chance there for those two. Vikings have it down 13. 
Look at North Turner, offensive coordinator and one of the greats to hold that position. Trying to figure out a way to move it against this Packer defense. It's been so good. Bridgewater throws, has a man. Pass caught, that's Diggs. And a nice start to this drive for the Vikings. That good for 17. Well, here's the route by Stephon Diggs, and he pushes it up, gets Shields running, and then is able to run the square in. And off of play action, of course, the Packers anticipating run there on first down. Got a clean lane for the completion. Saw North Turner, who was either the head coach or offensive coordinator for three rushing title winners, five titles in all. Now gets to coach Adrian Peterson, who is in the block. As Bridgewater throws, caught by Rudolph. Right up the seam, and Kyle Rudolph is good for 33. Well, they motion him across, and then they run him up the seam, and Bridgewater lays this ball perfectly. You got Morgan Burnett in a good position to make a play on the ball, but Rudolph then makes the play, and they have had to rely here on Bridgewater. The Packers have done an excellent job against Adrian Peterson, not giving him many places to run the ball. And North Turner dialing up the passes, and now they've had, they've had two big completions on the last two plays. That's Peterson in motion. Looking right now back to the left. Pass caught by line. And the fullback is wrestled out of bounds inside the 10. They'll mark him at the 6. Well, Zach Line, empty backfield. They split him out, get the ball out quick, try to help out that offensive line. This is an, an impressive drive by Teddy Bridgewater. Vikings were down double digits late in Chicago, and he brought his team back for a win. The late handoff, Peterson. Adrian Peterson, touchdown. Tenth all alone on the all-time list with 92 rushing touchdowns for Adrian Peterson. It just doesn't take much for Adrian Peterson. Watch Clay Matthews. He plays it well. He comes off the block, and normally Clay Matthews is going to make that play on any running back in the league other than Adrian Peterson. The lateral movement, the quickness that he has, it's an excellent job of capping off a drive that was set up on the right arm of Bridgewater. Walsh has missed an extra point in this game. He's one for two in that category, and this is now a six-point affair. On America's Game of the Week, this battle in the NFC North. Impressive drive for number five in the Vikings, who trail by six. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide. This is now a six-point game, 19-13. As the Vikings will kick it off, Jeff Janis is waiting deep for Green Bay. The drive will start at the 20. Welcome you back inside our broadcast booth, Joe and Troy, and uh, that was an impressive drive put on by the Vikings, specifically Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, it was a great job. I think people talk about Bridgewater and how he doesn't have great numbers. He's only thrown seven touchdowns, but you look at the drive. Clearly, he set that up. Three great completions, big plays down the field. You get down there near the goal line, and, and what should be the case, they hand the ball to Adrian Peterson, a great back. He scores the touchdown. So it goes down for a touchdown to Adrian Peterson but Bridgewater clearly the one who set the table. Pressure now back on the Packers offense to get more done, up by six. Randall Cobb in the backfield, they hand it to him, flag is down. Flag thrown at the start of the play. Illegal formation on the offense. Tackle was on the end of the line. Five-yard penalty, still first down. 
Take another look at it as that won't sit well with Mike McCarthy. So the Vikings yeah. get the touchdown and then they start their drive with a handoff to Cobb and they start it with an illegal formation. Well, they, and nor should it settle well with Mike McCarthy. This is a veteran offensive group and to not even be able to get lined up at the snap of the ball. Too many penalties offensively now themselves. Makes it first and 15. Rodgers completes Devontae Adams. Who we saw getting looked at on the sideline earlier in the game. That was in the first half, good for 16 and a first down. Excellent route by Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers in the pocket. He slowed it down and delivers a perfect strike. See that left ankle of Adams heavily wrapped. Quick throw, James Jones looking for a move. Can't get around Rhodes. A pickup of four. This season stream live local Sunday afternoon games right on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. Second and six. Rodgers has to back up. Now will throw to the sideline incomplete. Richard Rodgers, the target. This Green Bay team will get Andrew Corliss back been on IR designated to return. He'll be back on Thanksgiving as they host the Chicago Bears on a night when they retire Brett Favre's jersey at halftime. That'll be an emotional night at Lambeau. Where Corey Lindsley, he's out with an injury. J.C. Treader, he's holding up as best he can inside against Linville Joseph. He gets pushed right back in the lap of Rodgers. Third down and six. Packers four for 11 on third down. Sideline, Jones, he's got it. A little juggle at the end of the catch, but he hung on, and that's a big one from Aaron Rodgers. What a great catch by James Jones for 37. That's great concentration. The Vikings bring edge pressure, but they didn't contain Rodgers, and he was able to get outside the pocket. Now Lacey. As the Packers hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Picks up a couple over the left side. Let's go back to the completion on third down. Yeah, they bring the edge pressure, but they crash down inside, which allowed Rodgers to get out on the edge. And great concentration by James Jones. Had a drop earlier in this ball game, bobbled that one, but hauls it in. This is an excellent job. There's the double move that we talked about earlier that they were going to run at some point in the game. It's the first time we've seen it. He has to lay out. That was going to be a heck of a catch, even if he catches it clean. But to bobble it, stay with it, bring it to the ground, secure it. It's an excellent job. Right now, the Vikings are looking at Brian Robison. He's been here for nine years. Still playing well, and he limps off as the clock is stopped with 35 seconds left in the third. Here's the pressure we saw that they bring, and because of the inside rush, it opens things up. This is a big drive right here for the Green Bay Packers for Minnesota to come down, score a touchdown, make it a six-point game. Obviously a field goal here then makes it a two possession game for Green Bay. It's one of the biggest completions the Packers have had over the last four weeks. Yeah, and the Vikings, they do not give up any big plays like that. A couple shots last week they had, Oakland completed a couple, but typically they're hard to get those big plays against. Second down and seven, Lacey met in the backfield and brought down. And that's the rookie Hunter. And Daniil good for a loss of two, and that's the end of quarter number three. Six-point game. Green Bay inside field goal range at the moment. An important one in the NFC playoff picture in the north back after this from your local Fox station. 
Since 2010, the Green Bay Packers have gone 9-1-1 and against the Minnesota Vikings. If they win here today, they'll snap their three-game losing streak. They will climb to a tie with the tiebreaker in their favor on top in the NFC North. Third down and seven here, but already inside field goal range for Crosby, leading by six. Rodgers. Good protection now out to his right. To the end zone, caught for the touchdown, James Jones. What a throw, what a catch. And he is inbounds, secures it going to the ground. That will stand as a huge touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. I'm not sure what Terrence Newman was doing. He gets caught looking back to find Aaron Rodgers, and as he does, he turns James Jones loose on the back end, and there was no one else. There was really nothing else for Terrence Newman to be looking at, but it frees James Jones up, and Rich, or excuse me, Aaron Rodgers is able to find him. Well, James Jones, as we know, picked up right at the start of the season. He has some big weeks to begin this year. Kind of has gotten lost here in the last couple weeks. But, well, this drive right here, two big plays by him. So now going for two here to try and make it a 14-point game. This season, two for three are the Packers on two-point tries. Rodgers with touchdown passes in this game on third and ten and third and nine. Flips it for two to Jones. And it's a 14-point lead here for the Green Bay Packers. As Rodgers steps up, there was actually kind of a natural pick that took place. He had Another guy open to the corner of the end zone, but just an excellent job flipping it to James Jones and capping off what was already a great drive by James Jones. You see, they turn him loose back here in the corner. Rodgers picks up Jones underneath. He threatens the defense with his legs and got the defense to react. Remember last year after the one and two start, what Aaron Rodgers said to the Packers and their fans. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. Well, that was after a 1-2 and two start. Now after a 6-0 and oh start, they lose three in a row. But here in a division game on the road, they lead by 14. And Rodgers starting to look more like himself here as this game has gone on. Well, that's what we've kind of seen in years past. And, you know, they come down, the Vikings, that is, comes down and puts a little pressure on this offense, cuts the game to six points. And... Aaron Rodgers and company, they respond and answer it. And with the two-point conversion, make it a 14-point lead. Just an excellent job of responding off of the Vikings. Touchdown of their own. James Jones did not have a catch last week against Detroit. Six for 109 in this game. Averaging over 18 yards a catch. And that 27-yarder good for his first touchdown of the day. His seventh of the year. Here's Patterson on the return. Vikings need a big one. And that's a good start for Daryl Patterson. Out of bounds at the 49, and now a flag comes in at the end. It's a 52-yard return. Well, this guy's just got amazing speed. We saw it last week against Oakland after they had scored. He returns a touch to, or for a touchdown. Great return here. Drew the flag, waiting to see who exactly it was on. Maybe after on the Patterson. play is over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Minnesota, a headbutt. 15-yard penalty, first down. So it's a 52-yard return, and Cordero Patterson got in the face and then headbutted 
Mason Crosby to take 15 yards away. And that'll frustrate Mike Zimmer. Well, those are some of the things that you see of a young team and a young player in games like this. You got a great return. You set your offense up in great field position. And you just let the emotion of the moment get to you. Tucson is not very smart. For a guy who's really become not a piece of the offense really at all, two catches all season. He makes his impact as a kick returner, gave the good return, and then took 15 yards away from it. Bridgewater steps through trouble. He finds his tight end, Ellison, and they're right back to that spot. They're inside Green Bay territory to the 48 and 18 yarder to Rhett Ellison, his long for the year. Well, they get a clean shot. B.J. Raji does on Bridgewater. He makes a miss and delivers it then to his tight end. Excellent job right now. North Turner, he's calling the passes. Bridgewater has completed a high percentage of balls here in this game. Bridgewater just got it away, and this one is up for grabs and incomplete. Kyle Rudolph and Bridgewater got hit hard. Well, we saw Bridgewater miss the blitz earlier, and he's got to be able to see these things and where they're coming from. You got the edge rusher here, and as soon as this guy's over the top, you know there's a good chance that you're going to get that rusher off the slot, yet he never sees Casey Hayward coming on the blitz, and as a result, he takes a big-time lick. Couldn't step into the throw. Pass incomplete. 15 for 18 is Bridgewater. Now McKinnon in the backfield. Bridgewater's in big trouble. And was there a receiver, eligible receiver in the vicinity? The officials are looking at each other to check. They're only offensive linemen there, but they're not going to throw a flag as it whistled past McKinnon. And Bridgewater, there's the day. Four sacks for this Green Bay defense, which has played really well for the second straight week. Well, they have played well on that last play, Joe. Right guard Mike Harris, they, they're running play action protection. It should be able to pick up any kind of pressure inside. And Mike Harris, a right guard, he has a bust mentally, and it turns guy loose right on Bridgewater. With the play clock winding down, Minnesota has to use its first time out. A reminder, Thanksgiving weekend, we've got some of the best rivalries in college football, including the game of the week on Saturday, Notre Dame and Stanford. And a must-win game for both teams' playoff chances. It all starts Thursday on FS1. So right through the weekend, and here's that last play. Ellison is, according to this officiating crew, close enough. Watch 31. Bridgewater is definitely still inside the pocket. And it's over the head of McKinnon at the feet of the offensive lineman. No flag. 58, please. Well, 1358. Ellison was, was in oh, proximity. 1352. 1352, please. I think these officials in those situations when it comes to intentional ground, if there's any any doubt whatsoever. They're going to let it ride, and they felt that Ellison was at least close enough and could have been the targeted guy. So now third down and 10. The Vikings down by 14. First down, a catch and run of 16. Well, they got man coverage. They got Marius Randall, who's in man coverage on right with the crossing route. They try to run a natural pick. Randall actually plays it pretty well, but as we talked about earlier in this game, all of these receivers can really run. Randall can run too, but Wright had a step on him. And another third and long for the Vikings, but this time they're able to convert. The laying hand out to Peterson. 
Lost it. Another fumble. Shields has got it, and the Packers take over. And the first turnover of this game, but the sixth fumble of the year, all six at home by Adrian Peterson. It's knocked out. And it's his second lost fumble of the season. Burnett knocked it out. Shields recovers, and the Packers take over. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chili's. By Hyundai, an official sponsor of the NFL. And by Miller Lite, back in its original bottle, but not for long, it's Miller time. A lot of culture, great restaurants in this city, but right now the fun is being had by the Packers and their fans who have traveled here. Campus of the University of Minnesota. Packers lead it by 14 and they take over after the first turnover of the game. Sixth fumble of the season for Adrian Peterson. All six here at home. Here's Lacey now. Good day for Eddie Lacey. Meanwhile, Adrian Peterson's day. As we go back to the fumble, 13 carries, 45 yards, a touchdown, but this fumble. And Dom Capers has to be thrilled with the way his defense has slowed down Peterson, who has been seemingly unstoppable the last few weeks. Yeah, the leading rusher in the league coming into this game by 200 yards or so, and obviously on a roll. He's had 100 yards rushing in each of the last three games, 200 yards last week. And that was a great run right there, but as he's fighting for more yardage, they take advantage of it, knock it loose. Morgan Burnett and Sam Shields for the recovery to stall that drive. Lacey, his 15th carry. Trying to fight for the first down, and he's got it. He's had a nice day. He's knocking on the door of an 80-yard day. Behind a line that's lost their starting center, Corey Lindsley, with an ankle injury. Now it's Treader. And it was Lacey who barreled for the first down, kept those legs moving. Well, he's run exceptionally well. He's averaging over five yards a carry here in this ball game and like I said last year his two best games were against the Minnesota Vikings and who knows maybe this is the start for Eddie Lacy here in this 2015 season to get back to this playing at the level that he had been the last two years they fake it to Lacy on first down Rodgers taking a shot for Janice overthrow him Newman back there in coverage. He was not alone. Janice is the good speed straight line runner. A lot of Packer fans have been waiting to get more involved in the offense as just a couple of catches this season. I like the I like the thinking there by Tom Clements. You know they've been running the ball. They obviously here got a 14 point lead Eddie Lacy's been running it well and so on first down see if you can't take a shot and get a big play just unable to connect Aaron Rodgers at 50 percent throwing it for the day but leading by 14 here's Lacy great run by Lacy he gets nine Sandejo on the stop and Lacy is showing that burst that Mike McCarthy talked about during the week. He's starting to wear down this defensive front. As you're going to see, they do a good job initially at the point on the line of scrimmage, but he's able to bounce it out. And as he has throughout this game, just finish off the run. He's looked really good. Everson Griffin was injured on the play. He walks off the field. And for the fifth time in this game, the Green Bay Packers will have third down and one. Best day of the year for Lacey, a 90-yard effort. An extra offensive lineman, Josh Walker, comes in on third and one. And there's Griffin. Vikings need a stop. Packers looking for a conversion as they're six for 13 on third down.
Lacey does not get it. Eric Kendricks, the rookie linebacker, made the play. It's fourth down. And a big stop for the Vikings on defense. That's a great job. The Packers overall just have not been real good on third and one here today. But Kendricks, he comes off and he's got a free shot. He fills the gap and is able to stop Betty Lacey. That's a, that's a big stop and a much needed stop by this Vikings defense with 10 and a half minutes to play to give the ball back to their offense. Sixth tackle of the day for Kendricks. Line drive punt, but a good one. Off the foot of Mastay, and it checks out of bounds inside the 10. They're going to mark it at the 9. Good punt by Tim Mastay. Vikings have it down 14. After the good punt by Tim Mastay, the drive will start at the 9 for the Vikings down 14. Good job by this Packer defense to slow the roll for Adrian Peterson. He's been so good coming in. Pass is caught. Jerry is right. Good start to the drive out across the 25. Wrestled down at the 27 by Clinton Dix. Good for 18. You can see why they love Teddy Bridgewater in his second year. And all that talk about game manager, yes or no. Head coach Mike Zimmer said to, to us, I'm just glad he's mine. Let's see why these last three possessions, they've turned it loose and they let him throw it. He's throwing it well. Here's Diggs. Makes a move, gets a hit. A couple of Packers collide. That was Matthews and Perry. A gain of six, second and four, and the Vikings hurry it up back near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're going to do a little sugar huddle and kind of get things going a little bit, knowing they got to work against the clock. Two scores down. Bridgewater is going to be sacked. Sack number five, and this time it's Mike Daniels. Well, Mike Daniels, he's able to get pressure inside, and he goes through Mike Harris, and Teddy Bridgewater just really doesn't have much of a chance. And I tell you, Mike Daniels does an excellent job for an inside-type rusher and moves the pocket. He's a big guy, over 300 pounds, and every game you watch, he's getting movement. Back into the quarterback and making plays in the running game. So after three games without a sack, five on the day for Green Bay, make it six. Dayton Jones now is going to spike it, and they do not throw a flag for that. And it's fourth down, a good play up front. This defense has been great. Well, they put Asiata to that side to try to offer a little bit of help, but there's pressure. He's releasing into the route. And one-on-one -on -one against the rookie, T.J. Clemmings, and Dayton Jones just beats him. No flag for spiking the football after the play was over. Now fourth and 22, a punt by Locke. Good one. Cobb. Out across the 45. Thielen on the tackle. Green Bay with a football leading by 14. A chance to climb back on top in the NFC North with a tie-breaking win over the Vikes. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Seattle's. Coming in, the Minnesota Vikings, the least penalized team across the NFL as we play here in Week 11. But penalties will be a story of this game. Defensive penalties, frustration. Even one here by Cordero Patterson after a long kick return. A season-high 110 penalty yards against the Vikings, as opposed to four for 19 against the Packers. Green Bay leading by 14 points. They take over at their own 47 and hand it to Lacey. Lacey limps between plays, but during plays, he's looked very good here in this one, second and five as he gets five. Yeah, I want to go back to those penalties, and as we talked about, I mean, this is an opportunity for Minnesota with a one-game lead and now facing the defending champs in the division. If you win this game, you're up two and a half, you know, with just a few to play, and you don't have to be necessarily perfect when you're playing against a team like Green Bay and you're trying to overtake them, but you've got to be a lot better than what Minnesota has shown here in this ball game, and you certainly can't have over 100 yards in penalties. 
Season high 91 yards for Lacey. Gets it on a toss running left. We look ahead to Thanksgiving Day in a matchup of the Philadelphia Eagles against the Detroit Lions who will be trying for their third win in a row. It all begins with Fox NFL kickoff at 10.30 a.m. Eastern right here on Fox. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles suffered a loss at the hands of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Huge day in that game for Jameis Winston. Third down and four here. Rodgers spins out of trouble. Flag is thrown. Pass incomplete for Lacey. Penalty against Green Bay. If the Vikings decline it, it's fourth down. Holding, number 75, offense. Hiddles decline, fourth down. It's against Bulaga. This is a banged up offensive line coming in. Bakhtiari with a knee, sitting. He's got numerous maladies that have bothered him this season. Lindsley, the only real healthy guy coming in, and he left with an ankle injury. Lang a shoulder, Bulaga a knee. Yet they've done a good enough job here on the road against a good Vikings defense. Fourth down, Mastek. Fair catch hauled in by Marcus Sherrills. We'll take a break. 14-point game. Back to the field, the Minnesota offense with 6.17 left. America's Game of the Week continues. Adrian Peterson came in averaging 118 rush yards per game against the Green Bay Packers. Highest by any active player against any single opponent today. 13 for 45 yards. Green Bay defense has held him in check. Here's a pass. It's caught by Jarius Wright. On first down, a gain of five. Hayward on the stop. And the Vikings have to get after it in a hurry here. Second and five down 14. Yeah, Peterson won't be too much of a factor now as we go down the stretch here with under six minutes to go. But Dom Capers and this Green Bay defense really outstanding in controlling him. Pass is caught by Peterson. Makes a man miss. That was Shields. He picks up a first down as he gets nine yards. This defense for Green Bay held Detroit to 287 yards as they had allowed an average of 492 the previous three games coming in there. And now they've done a good job here on the road against the Vikings and against Adrian Peterson in particular. Yeah, there's a good look at Dom Capers, a defensive coordinator. A little surprised right now that the Vikings are huddling and, and not hurrying things up a little more than they are. Take the play clock all the way down to three and a launch. It is too far for Wallace. Demarius Randall back there in coverage, the rookie starting corner. And Bridgewater put too much on it. Well, they almost catch Demarius Randall. Wallace has passed him. And, you know, Randall, he's cluing into the quarterback. And he's a young guy. And sometimes you think that you're accustomed to being able to run with some of these college receivers. Wallace is one of the fastest guys in the league. He got beyond him, but they're not able to make him pay. Bridgewater's completed passes to eight different receivers. Would have been nine if they connected there. Second and ten. Pass is caught by Kyle Rudolph. He's got two big receptions, including a 47-yarder for a touchdown. Brought down by Nate Palmer, third and two. Career high 99 yards for Rudolph. This one is batted down. Jones got his hand up. McKinnon was the target, now fourth and two, and they are forced to go for it. Yeah, they don't have a choice. Bridgewater, he, he has the right idea. Dayton Jones, who's had himself a nice afternoon, he gets up, he knocks the ball down. Bridgewater had a man there to complete it and convert that for a first down. 
but Mike Zimmer left with no no other choice than to go for it here on fourth and two and backed up. Added pass for Jones who has two sacks in this game. Bridgewater is going to flip it incomplete. And the Packers take over. And the good day continues for the Green Bay defense. Bridgewater, once he steps up, if he immediately commits himself to running, he could have left and taken off out to the left side. Instead, he's trying to buy time and just nowhere to go with the football. An excellent job defensively, really throughout this game by the Green Bay Packers. Last week, an excellent performance after a few weeks of giving up a lot of yardage. They shut down for the most part the Detroit Lions. And then they come back here today and do a good job against the Vikings. It doesn't get easy from here for Minnesota. They're next at Atlanta, at home against Seattle, at Arizona. Meanwhile, Green Bay has a Thanksgiving game against the Chicago Bears, who lost at home today to the Denver Broncos. Fox Sports proudly supports Folds of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information, visit foxsportssupports.com. Timeout taken by Minnesota. They have only one left before a second and nine. Now you talk about Minnesota and how it doesn't get any easier and I think that's going to be the important thing for this Minnesota team I mean they have played well they had won five in a row and you know this was going to be a tough game we all know that but now they're been they're going to be traveling on the road to Atlanta they still got Seattle and at Arizona and they've got a lot of work ahead of them but I think after this game what they realize is yeah even though they're an up-and-coming team they they've still got plenty of work to do to play against some of these perennial powerhouses that are in the league. Second down and nine here for the Packers. Here's Lacey. Nothing out there. Well played Sharif Floyd coming in to make the stop. And another timeout, the final timeout taken by Minnesota. The Green Bay Packers mentioned the Chicago game coming up. They're at Detroit at home against Dallas on the 13th of December at Oakland at Arizona. This is a Green Bay team that's won four straight division titles. And Mike McCarthy in his 10th season has taken this franchise to the playoffs in seven of his first nine years and they are pointed in that direction yet again. Well, you talked about it a little bit earlier as you look at the NFC and you know Carolina of course with a with a big win today against Washington and they turn around they play Thursday against against a Dallas team who feels like maybe they can get going a little bit with Romo back they won today against Tampa Bay but Carolina they have been running away with uh, with things in the NFC. Third down and 12. No timeouts left for the Vikings. Packers going to put it up. And another drop by Randall Cobb. You talk to Harrison Smith, the safety for the Vikings. He'll say the difference with the Packers now as this one is just right in the hands of Cobb and he started to move before he made the catch. He said they would line up Nelson on one side, Cobb in the slot to the other, and then you've got Rodgers who will go to anybody at any time in any part of the field. They're tough to handle. This is a big kick right now for Mason Crosby. If he doesn't make it, he gives the ball to the Vikings with decent field position. This from 52. What a day for Crosby. He is five for five. And on this chilly day in Minneapolis, Crosby, the offense, the defense. He's got Green Bay on top by 17.
continue on America's Game of the Week. It's now a 17-point game. Just to finish up some stats, Randall Cobb's been targeted nine times. He has only two catches. He does have a touchdown in this game. Mason Crosby has tied his career high with his fifth field goal made. This return is out across the 30. And it's the fullback, Zach Line, who gets his second chance to return a kick in this game. Well, that field goal by Crosby, that pretty much uh, eliminates, for the most part, any opportunity for the Vikings to try to crawl back into this ball game. And, you know, once they got behind and really couldn't rely on Adrian Peterson, the fumble that he had, they had a chance if they're able to do something on that drive. But they're just not built, as we saw in the previous possession, to sit back there and throw the football and try to drive the ball down the field with some of the things they're trying to cover up along that offensive line. There isn't a fan base that travels better than the Green Bay Packer fan base. And we just heard a go pack go chant from this crowd. Here in Minneapolis is Michael Pruitt makes his first catch of the game under four to go. Second and two. Now he's not a factor in Adrian Peterson, but it's 13 carries, 45 yards. Here's a catch made by McKinnon. For Peterson, the 45 rush yards, his fewest since the season opener at San Francisco. For a guy who had averaged 144 rush yards a game over the last three. Good work by the Packer defense there. A good game plan by Dom Capers coming in, and you know, they were able to get to him in the backfield a number of times and stop him before he got going. Bridgewater trying to get away, and eventually he does from Nick Perry. Well, and they've harassed Teddy Bridgewater throughout this game. Second down and 10, the OT presented by Lowe's coming up after this one. You know, we did talk about Bridgewater coming into the game, though, and, you know, where he's at. And as you said, Joe, this staff is sure excited to have him and have him as the leader of this team. And I like what I've seen here today. He's thrown the ball well, and he's having to make up for some inefficiencies along the offensive line. He's done that at times, but it's hard under pressure the way he has been. Over the middle pass is behind the intended target, Thielen. Third down and 10. And a 30 to 13 game with just over three to go. How about the six sacks put up by the Green Bay defense as well? It hasn't just been shutting down the running game of Peterson. They're hearing about not getting a sack for three straight. Packer defense has come up with six. Bridgewater throws. He's got a man, Diggs. And the catch is made on the sideline. And this top target for Teddy Bridgewater with a tough catch of 16 yards. I'll tell you, Clinton Diggs, he comes, he comes in there and puts a big hit on Stephon Diggs, but he's able to hang on to it. Oh, good job of finishing the catch. Thankfully not injured, coming down awkwardly and then getting popped. Block stop with 2.58 to go. Bridgewater using a stiff arm and then somehow able to get it out of bounds. Peppers was right in his face. Yeah, you wonder how much more Mike Zimmer is going to want to see of this. He's been under duress throughout this game, especially, you know, here in this fourth quarter and, and down three scores. I think that left shoulder is still bothering him. We've seen him on the sideline wincing as he's been waiting for his turn. He has to land on it there. I'm with you. I mean, this is a 17-point game under three to go. Maybe time to see Sean Hill again. Second and ten, Bridgewater. Pass is tipped incomplete. Coverage by Hayward. Intended target, Rudolph. You know, sometimes, Joe, sometimes these coaches and, and Mike Zimmer 
is probably in that school of thought that say hey there's a lot to be learned in these types of games and even though you're down let your guys play and let them taste what this is all about. There's a lot of growth that can certainly occur but like you said the guy who's left the game earlier with an injury uh, he's taken he's taken a lot of punishment in this game. Third down and ten. Bridgewater finds Rudolph. He's inside the 25. Fourth down coming up. Clay Matthews was the first guy to get to Rudolph. Yeah, he's hobbling off now as he got up limping. Fourth and three. Yeah, he's another guy who's been beat up pretty good this year, but keeps finding a way to play. Here's one to the end zone and out of bounds is Stefan Diggs. And the Packers take over. With 2.13 to go. And this was some game by this Green Bay Packers defense. We're going to give Green Bay the win as we look at the playoff picture. Just to look at the graphic with Green Bay now on top with this head to head tiebreaker over Minnesota. Both teams will walk out of here seven and three. The Falcons in a position right now if it were to end today in a playoff spot and you get the five and five teams. There's a lot going on down at the bottom of that playoff picture. With. Six more weeks to go. Yeah, especially especially within that NFC East and all that's happening there. Giants off today and they are sitting there at five and five. Two teams behind them Washington and Philly four and six. Dallas three and seven. Here's Lacey and he slides down inbounds to keep the clock. Rolling to the two minute warning. Big day for Eddie Lacey and the Packers who are on their way to win number seven. Two minute warning in Minneapolis. A look at the old and the current with outdoor football. For the Minnesota Vikings. This game belongs to the Green Bay Packers leading by 17 as they have the ball inside their own 35. Producer of today's game Richie Zients, director Rich Russo, associate directors Jake Jolivet, Rich Gross. Second down and one here for Green Bay Lacey in a tailback. John Kuhn in front of him and Kuhn gets it for the first down. The Packer fans salute him. Give you a recap if you're just joining us. Aaron Rodgers, one of two touchdown passes in this game. Adrian Peterson had a touchdown, but he was for the most part shut down today with just 45 rushing yards. Six sacks by the Green Bay Packers defense. There's touchdown throw number two. That one to James Jones, who had 109 yards receiving. Crosby, five field goals made. Good day for the Packers defense. Got a big weapon back today in Eddie Lacy. That signature spin move, the nose for the first down. And if he can get on a roll, they can uh, take some of the pressure off Rodgers here down the stretch. Well, him. yeah, I think if they are going to make a run at this thing, Joe, that, that he's going to have to be a factor. There's no doubt. Today was a a big step in the right direction for them. This is a big win for the Green Bay Packers. As we know, a team that had lost three in a row was really struggling. They struggled some here in this ball game against a team in Minnesota up and coming, five in a row, playing against them on the road in, a, in an environment where this Vikings team has been good. So backs against the wall within the division. This was a big win and one that Mike McCarthy and his team definitely needed, and they got it.
And the Green Bay Packers have a week where they get to stop answering questions. It'll be a quick week as they have the Chicago Bears on Thanksgiving, a game where they will retire Brett Favre's jersey at the half in what promises to be a memorable moment and night at Lambeau Field. We'll take a break, come back here, and we'll wrap up as Mike McCarthy has to be really proud of his group coming in here to get a win on the road. And the Packers now 7-3 back after this.